Let's head to Surrey, BC. Rob is on the line. Rob, go ahead, please. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. My question is, uh, David, what percentage or whatever, how do you set your stop loss on a stock? And uh, I was thinking about buying Amgen for a long-term dividend growth play. So what do you think about this price at this time? Great. Thanks. So I'll just start with stops. You know, I think many long-term viewers know we use stop losses on all of our positions. Uh, there's many ways to do that. Some people use a moving average. Some people use some percentage that they're willing to let something go down. Um, I would say that every uh, equity has its own personality, some much more volatile than others. What I want to do is I want to try to identify inflection points where due to changing behavior, it's obvious that something's changing, whether we have information or not. And so I look for price points where the behavior is changing. So I use something called a point and figure price chart which is one of those X's and O's charts you may see from time to time. You can look it up. There's an excellent book, book written by Tom Dorsey about point and figure charting. But it helps you to identify statistically significant points where you're going from higher highs and higher lows mm -hmm. to lower lows and lower highs. And uh, so I would, I would take a look at that. But it's just important you have a discipline around it. Um, as it as it relates to Amgen, you know, listen, this is this is a great company. Uh, it's one of the stronger per, uh, performers uh, in the category. Uh, it's uh, it's got a two and a half percent dividend yield. They're growing their earnings at about ten percent mm -hmm. uh, going forward. They got they got very strong franchises. It's a hundred twenty five billion dollar company. Uh, I think that you could do quite well with Amgen. You know, you can go out and you could buy the XBI ETF and buy a basket of the big biotech companies. Uh, that's one to take a look at. Uh, but I think Amgen is a great rifle shot. The only difficulty right now for these big biotech companies is that there's to move the needle on a $125 billion company, you've got to make a big acquisition, and there's not so many out there right now. Uh, but for organic growth, uh, this, is, this is trading very well relative to the group, and we like the group in general. Bob's on the line from Calgary. Bob, go ahead. You want to say, um, I just wanted to call uh, about MasterCard. I had bought it about two years ago, and uh, around seventy-seven dollars, and it seems to always get to high nineties, and then right. sort of I think it, it'll stall out. And I'm just wondering what you think about the, uh, the outlook for it. Q well, Q f f first Thanks, of all, first of all, congratulations. Uh, you know, MasterCard has been a great stock to hold. Uh, it certainly rallied extremely nicely into the early part of 2015. And then since then, like a lot of companies in the market, it's chopped in a trading range. Uh, and here we are right back at the top of the trading range. If you believe that interest rates can slowly move higher, this is an economically sensitive country, uh, sorry, uh, an interest rate sensitive company. Uh, and it, so I think that it's very close to breaking out to new highs. And I think there's a whole leg higher in the stock. So we own uh, some MasterCard. I'd buy the stock right here. Look at how it's behaving relative to a tough market. If the concern in the market right now is higher bond yields, mm -hmm. this benefits in the world of higher bond yields. Uh, and so the stock is hitting a new relative strength high versus the rest of the market. It's had virtually no negative impact in the last three days. Uh, I think the market is telling you something. There's very good sponsorship in this company. Okay. Um, Steve's calling from Brampton, Ontario. Go ahead, Stephen, please. Hi. Uh, I'd like to get an imp uh, if your impression on Brookfield infrastructure and uh, whether it would be a good buy right now. Thank you. I'll hang up and listen to your call. Thanks a lot. Okay. Well, you know, clearly, uh, I would talked earlier, infrastructure is quite attractive. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, here, here where the stock is, you know, I think that this is something that you can, you can have tucked away and I'd, I wouldn't mind owning. Oh, okay. Let's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. That whole infrastructure theme, uh, yeah, that's going to be a that's going to be a tidal wave of money if they abandon the monetary policy stimulus. Uh, let's head to Toronto. Kevin is on the line. Go ahead, Kevin. David, uh, David, uh, Qualcomm, please. Okay. So, Kevin, uh, our number one weight as a sector in the firm is technology, uh, for lots of reasons. You know, cloud, uh, subscription-based software. Uh, and uh, the Internet of Things. Uh, and part of the Internet of Things, of course, these, all these handsets, and Qualcomm has a pretty strong lock in that space. Uh, so we like semiconductors as a subset of technology, and uh, Qualcomm, one of the stronger performers. 
So uh, we own uh, Qualcomm, we own the old Broadcom, which is AVGO. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks very attractive also. I think you could own a basket of these by buying XSD, which is the ETF for semiconductors, uh, and you've got less specific company risk, uh, but I, I'd be very comfortable owning the stock. We're going to be right back with David Burrows of Baromshire Capital Management taking your questions on North American large caps, 1-855-326-6266.